Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Sunday, August 30th, 2020. I'm your lay reader, Zach Cosner. I invite you to download the bulletin for today's service, which can be found in the link in the description here on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, you can also go to our website, www.centralpresspb.com, click the publications link at the top of the webpage, scroll down, look for today's date, and you should be able to download the PDF of the bulletin uh, from that link. I'll go ahead and feel free to print it um, because uh, next I will ask you to um, join me in looking at the announcements on the back of the bulletin. Um, I want to go ahead and continue to remind you that um, Dominic Munn has uh, set up a blessings box at the fire department in Grady. Um, if you are in need of uh, canned food items, uh, or books, uh, feel free to go and stop by that Blessings Box. If you are interested in donating items for the Blessings Box, uh, please contact uh, Jessica Munn on social media, or you can contact uh, the church uh, office through their social media accounts as well. Our username is Central Prez PB. Archives of our online services can be found on Facebook and on YouTube. Links to each are on our website, centralprezpb.com. CPC also now has online giving available. Check out our website, www.centralprezpb.com. Look for the Donate Now link. Uh, we take a debit card, credit cards, and checks. And we also uh, can set up a recurring donation on a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. The God of heaven has made his home on earth. Christ dwells among us and is one with us. Highest in all creation, he lives among the least. He journeys with the rejected and welcomes the weary. Come now, all who thirst, and drink the water of life. Come now, all who hunger, and be filled with the good things. Come now, all who seek, and be warmed by the fire of love. Please join me now for the prayer of confession first uh, in unison and then uh, silently. Gladly, O God, we live and move and have our being in you, yet always in the midst of this creation, glory we see sin's shadow and feel death's darkness around us in the earth, sea, and sky. The abuse of matter beside us in the broken, the hungry, and the poor. The betrayal of one another and often deep within us striving against your spirit, O Trinity of love, forgive us that we may forgive one another. Heal us that we may be, may be people of healing and renew us that we may also be makers of peace. And now silently, amen. As people born of the water and the spirit, we have died to the old life, and a new life has begun. God's grace is poured out upon us day by day. Come to the water and remember your baptism. Be thankful and live as one who has been raised to new life. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Now we'll go ahead and ask Rose Von Temlin to come on with today's children's sermon. Good morning, everyone. I hope you've had a good week. Today, we want to talk about getting ready. So, are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? Are you positively sure you're ready? Well, what are you ready for? Oh, the children's sermon. What else? I'm so silly. But anyway, so today's children's sermon is about being ready. Now, most of you have started your school last week. And you probably had to do some things to get ready, like probably go buy some new shoes, maybe a new outfit or two, so that you are got enough clean ones to wear to, to school every day. You probably went and bought some new school supplies. And then the morning, the night before school started, you probably went to bed early so that you would be ready to get up early and go to school. And then when you got up the next morning, you probably brushed your teeth and brushed your hair and ate some breakfast, gathered up your supplies, and out the door you went ready for school. 
But you know, there's something else we need to get ready for too. And we don't always know when that will happen. That, that is Jesus coming again. When Jesus left this earth, he told us to be ready because he would be coming back again. And so some of the things that we can do to get ready for Jesus coming back is to have our hearts and our minds ready. And to have our hearts ready means that we need to learn how to love others and to serve others and do the things that Jesus would want us to do. Having our mind ready would be reading the Bible, studying God's word, and learning about the things that God would want us to do. So remember when you're getting ready for school, think about getting ready for Jesus too. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for all the things that you have given to us. We ask that you will help us to be ready when you return so that we may be ready to not only serve you, but to go with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Rose, for that great sermon. Uh, speaking of sermon, let's go ahead and turn it over to Reverend Tim Reeves with this week's service, Goody Two Shoes. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Glad you could gather with us this morning as we worship God. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to hear the Word of God. Our first reading this morning comes from the third chapter of the book of Exodus, beginning with verse 1 and proceeding through verse 15. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me what is his name, what shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. Our second reading comes from the twelfth chapter of Paul's letter to the church in Rome, beginning with verse 9 and proceeding through verse 21. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. 
Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And finally, <clears throat> from the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew, beginning with verse 21 and proceeding through verse 28. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is read and proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear that hearing we might believe, and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. <clears throat> the expression goody two-shoes is often used derogatorily today to, or derogatively today, to describe someone who seems holier than thou. It actually comes to us, though, from an anonymous writer who wrote a story entitled Goody Two Shoes in 1765. And the story tells of a little orphaned girl named Marjorie Meanwell who goes through much of her life with only one shoe. But one day a rich gentleman gave her 
a complete pair of shoes. And she is so happy that she then goes throughout the town telling everyone about her good fortune, hence the name of the story, Goody Two Shoes. Goody in that day and age was a term of respect used for a woman in the lower classes. And it was roughly equivalent to Miss today. But beyond going and telling everyone about her good fortune, this woman then turned to a virtuous life. She became a teacher and married a wealthy man. The story itself is a morality tale about the importance of living a virtuous life, something that was of utmost importance to the Puritans. And the marrying of a wealthy man at the end of the story was seen as a great reward for her virtuous life. Unfortunately, that's often the only message any of us ever take from living lives of virtue, as if it were nothing more than a means to an end. But for the Puritans, this message of the story was different. It was a lesson in the importance of living one's life in response to the grace God has already extended to us. And so in that regard, I believe it is high time that we in the church reclaimed the moniker of Goody Two Shoes. We need to reclaim the <clears throat> life which says in no uncertain terms who and whose we are. John Calvin expressed it this way, we are not our own. Let not our reason nor our will therefore sway our plans and deeds. We are not on our own. Let us therefore not set it as our goal to seek what is expedient for us according to the flesh. We are not our own. In so far as we can, let us therefore forget ourselves and all that is ours. Conversely, we are gods. Let us therefore live for God and die for God. We are gods. Let God's wisdom and will rule all our actions. We are gods. Let all the parts of our life accordingly strive toward God as our only lawful goal. <clears throat> I believe that that is the message of our readings this morning. Be it the call of Moses to stand before Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Or Jesus's words about denying ourselves and taking up our cross and following him, or the words with which Paul lays out the marks of a true Christian. The common thread that runs throughout all of these texts is that the people of God are called to respond to God's grace. It's that simple. And it's also that complicated. Because the Christian life, the faithful life, the virtuous life, is a life that manifests obedience to God in all situations. Giving thanks to God for God's gifts. We are to be a bunch of goody two-shoes. That should go without saying. It should be clear to everyone everywhere who has ever been touched by the grace of God, who's ever heard the word of God proclaimed from the pulpit, or who has ever been claimed by God in the waters of baptism and nourished by God at the Lord's table. It should be kept in our hearts. It should be recited to our children and talked about both when we are at home and when we are away from home, when we lie down and when we rise, just like the glorious words from Deuteronomy, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
and with all your soul and with all your might. We know that truth. We hear those words and know that whoever is saying them is preaching to the choir. But living those words in every aspect of our lives proves to be most difficult. Perhaps the most difficult thing we will ever do. Why? Because like Peter, we often set our minds not on divine things, but on human things. Peter has just responded to Jesus' question, who do you say that I am, with the words, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And now he stands before Jesus and presumes to tell him what being the Messiah means. Peter's words betray his thoughts. Yes, he recognizes Jesus as the Messiah, but he doesn't understand what that meant. Neither did any of the disciples, which is why Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone. But I think Peter's words also betray a deeply felt fear of suffering and shame. Not surprisingly, Peter speaks not only of what is on his mind, but I would imagine what is on our minds from time to time as well. Surely there must be another way, an easier way, a less humiliating way to serve God. Surely God would not ask us to endure suffering or death. Surely God's favor should be a guarantee of a life of ease and comfort, right? Jesus, maybe you need to go back and rethink your position, if not for your sake, then for ours. Instead, Jesus tells us to get behind him, to take our place as disciples and follow where he leads. Same thing with Moses. I think it was fear which led Moses to ask, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Remember, Moses was brought up in the house of Pharaoh. But we can almost sense that he understands this is going to be a potential suicide mission. Because Pharaoh holds all the cards from Moses' perspective. He has all the power. Pharaoh could simply look at Moses and with a wave of his hand have him thrown to the crocodiles. Maybe you should rethink this whole liberating the Israelites thing, God. Surely there's got to be a better way. And at any rate, protests Moses, you've got the wrong man. In their very human ways of thinking, both Peter and Moses exhibit what so many of us exhibit when our minds are on human things rather than divine things. Our survival instincts kick in and we want to play it safe. Fear cripples us, so many of us just go along to get along. We remain silent in the presence of injustice, evil, and prejudice because we fear what others might say about us or do to us if we were to speak out. But there's no getting around Paul's words to the church. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. <clears throat> Thomas Akempis summarized our all-too-human way of thinking in his classic on the spiritual life entitled The Imitation of Christ. There he writes, there will always be many who love Christ's heavenly kingdom, but few who will bear his cross. 
Jesus has many who desire consolation, but few who care for adversity. He finds many to share his table, but few who will join him in fasting. Many are eager to be happy with him. Few wish to suffer anything for him. Many will follow him as far as the breaking of the bread, but few will remain to drink from his passion. Many are awed by his miracles. Few accept the shame of the cross. Many in the church today eagerly push their way to the front of the line to receive God's blessings, but cannot be found when called upon to live a virtuous life in response to those blessings. In this day and age, many a Christian has succumbed to the temptation of offering a chief grace, a cheap grace that costs nothing in order to fill pews and collection plates in lieu of a costly grace which calls for self-denial and self-sacrifice. I find it interesting that outside of our sanctuaries and the occasional piece of jewelry, we erect crosses only at places of death in cemeteries instead of as a witness to a way of life. And yet Jesus tells us that the cross should be visible in every aspect of our lives. If you want to be my followers, he says, take up your cross and follow me. Barbara Brown Taylor, Taylor put it this way, the deep secret of Jesus's words to us is that our fear of suffering and death robs us of life because fear of death always turns into fear of life, into a stingy, cautious way of living that is not really living at all. The deep secret of Jesus's hard words is that the way to have abundant life is not to save it, but to spend it, to give it away, because life cannot be shut up and saved. The cross bears witness to God's power. It bears witness to the truth that evil is utterly powerless. It stands empty as a reminder that Christ is risen from the grave and that death is not the final word. And in its shadow, we find the courage, the hope, the faith, and the zeal to be goody two-shoes, working for justice, wherever injustice is found, among whomever it is found. For at the foot of, cross, uh, of the cross of Christ, we all stand and discover that we have been graced by the love and forgiveness of God. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now at this time that you would please join me and confirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and offerings, which once again will be taken electronically this week using the Donate Now link on our website, uh, www.centralpresspb.com. If you prefer to mail your offering in, you can mail your checks or money orders to 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. 
It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit. And until that most glorious day, when in the name of Jesus, every, may, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend, and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, let us uh, share our joys and concerns, uh, which there are uh, many uh, in the um, uh, prayer chat. Um, we need to ask for uh, prayers uh, this week for the Mills family, um, Nevada, Julie, and Reagan. Um, we found out that, um, I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but um, Reagan and uh, Julie had been diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, they both recovered. Uh, Nevada um, came down with it uh, late last week. Uh, we were notified, um, I believe it was yesterday, that he has been diagnosed with pneumonia as a result of his COVID diagnosis in both of his lungs. It's mild pneumonia. Uh, he currently doesn't have to go to the hospital. They're treating him with antibiotics at home. So please keep the Mills family in your prayers. Um, we also would like for prayer for uh, Kara Taylor. Uh, she made it through her third brain surgery uh, and is doing well. Uh, that is the Kara that we've been asking for prayer for for the, um, for the last several weeks. Um, we are asking for prayer for uh, Kathy Griffin. That is Jessica Munn's aunt and um, uh, Pamela, uh, uh, Pamela's sister. Um, she uh, had a heart attack this morning, or excuse me, Saturday morning. Um, she had stents put in, and we'll have to, uh, and we'll have a couple more when she gains some more strength. Um, we are uh, continuing to pray for her recovery. Um, we're also um, praying for Susie Von Tunglin, who had a successful surgery on Friday. Um, she is at home uh, sore, but okay. Uh, we want to go ahead and keep everyone who is affected by Hurricane Laura in our prayers. Um, I know many of us were affected personally um, when the storm came through Arkansas, but, but I know that down in uh, Louisiana, there are many people who, who lost everything. So we need to continue to um, keep them in your prayers. Um, we like to keep Ben Poss and his family in our prayers. Uh, his grandmother passed on Wednesday afternoon. Um, we also uh, want to keep all of those, um, as we spoke about COVID earlier, we want to continue to keep all of those who are um, uh, on the front lines, our medical professionals in our prayers. Uh, we also want to continue to keep uh, all those who are working with the public in our prayers, um, uh, including our um, correctional officers who, uh, who I work with and who Roseworth works with. Um, uh, we've had a couple outbreaks at work, and so we want to keep those people in our prayers. Um, we want to um, want to wish a happy birthday to Bryn Massey. Um, she turned 19 on Saturday. Um, we also want to, um, uh, there are many people who are very, feeling very sad about, um, about some, um, some celebrity uh, losses to due to cancer. Chadwick Boseman, um, who uh, most people know as the Black Panther, but also starred in several movies uh, as um, Jackie Robinson and um, as Thurgood Marshall, passed away from colon cancer. Uh, so I want to take a moment to uh, uh, pray for all of those who um, who are who lost loved ones to cancer. Um, we also want to keep. Um, Westminster Presbyterian Church in Little Rock uh, this morning in our prayers. Um, their pastor, Reverend David Dyer, uh, passed away um, Saturday morning. Um, David had some uh, heart issues and some um, uh, had 
been diagnosed with heart failure and uh, with some lung issues. Um, had had some surgeries earlier this year. I got the pleasure to meet him and um, know him through the Presbytery of Arkansas. Um, that of course Westminster is the is the church that that they lost their church to fire about two years ago, um, and they ended up um, purchasing a house in East End and um, basically reconverting it into a, a, a small sanctuary. They were a small congregation and. Um, it allowed them to continue uh, to meet and to worship, and uh, it is a loss for that uh, community that their pastor has passed away. <clears throat> so please keep everyone in his family and uh, the Westminster community in your prayers. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. Please be with the family of those who have lost loved ones recently to COVID-19, to other medical ailments, and to cancer. Uh, we know that those uh, who have left this heavenly, uh, um, I mean, who have left this planet are in heaven with you and, uh, and we know that they are in a better place. Uh, please be with those who are diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, please heal them and give the doctors the wisdom to treat them in, in, a, in a manner that allows the, the virus to be defeated and, and as quickly as possible with the least amount of side effects going forward. Um, please be with all of those people that we mentioned here today. Um, the, our coworker, uh, who has COVID-19 um, with uh, Kathy Griffin, who, will be, who is uh, recovering from a heart attack. Uh, please heal uh, Susie Von Tunglin uh, from her, uh, after her surgery, uh, continue to be with Brad Von Tunglin and heal his medical issues. Uh, we ask for um, prayers for the, um, the Curry family and the Frizzell family who have lost family members recently. Uh, please continue to be with the doctors of, of Kara Tyler. Um, we, we, we thank the Lord that, that she successfully went under her, underwent her brain surgery and uh, continue to uh, be with all those who we mentioned earlier. Give us hope that we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Go out into the world in peace, to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit taking today's message with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.